My parents' divorce was so messy that after I graduated from university, I moved literally halfway across the world to Argentina, anything I could do to get away from them. But divorce and its effects on kids kept following me. And I made a film called Erasing Dad, Borrando Papa, that exposes the discrimination fathers face when they want to be in their kids' lives after divorce. The film's release caused the law in Argentina to be changed so that moms and dads could share joint custody. It also helped me to heal and reconnect with my family, and I returned to the United States. I wanted to make a follow-up film, and after a post on Facebook, my inbox was flooded with desperate pleas for help. Why were all these families reaching out to me, a filmmaker? Why were the family courts unable to help them? I decided to tell the stories of the ignored victims of family court, the children. I think that as a child, like I, I kind of knew it was coming subconsciously. You know, there's there's moments that I have flashbacks where I could see, you know, the door close. I could be standing in the hallway, just hear them screaming. So I just kind of disappear. So when my parents got divorced, I was 12 years old. My father was like, pack your things. We're going to go, you know, visit your grandma for a little while. When they left, he pulled them out of school, and I didn't know what to do. I was so overwhelmed with what was going on. I was living up in Pennsylvania because I was in the military. They ended up in Virginia. Karen, my stepmom, I also call her mom, she came into my life when I was about 14. Initially, I was there practically every weekend. So the visits started to decrease every month. And then I was stopped. Sometimes it was because the children would call me and say they didn't want to come. Sometimes I would get an email saying, well, the kids don't want to see you this weekend was signed by my ex, but it sounded like his wife. I was just so confused. It really felt like she didn't want anything to do with me. I can't even really answer why the whole thing happened. I was never on drugs. I had no criminal background. I had no psychological issues other than being heartbroken because I lost my children. I get reminded every day, like, uh, oh, your dad sucked. <laughs> my dad and my stepmom sat me down and discussed with me how awful of a person my mom was. I don't think my mom wanted me to have any contact with my father. Growing up, I had learned to hate him. As I got older, my dad said, you owe your loyalties to me because I've been here for you and your mom hasn't and your mom left you. It's a constant reminder because I am my father's child, so. I began studying parental alienation approximately three years ago. I started looking around to people who have been affected by this on Facebook groups and support groups, and I didn't get any answers. I thought it's time to put some serious scientific attention to this problem. Parental alienation. The set of behaviors that a parent will do to try to distance their child or hurt the relationship between the child and the other parent. Okay, so these... It can be very subtle. They can refer to the other parent in pronouns, completely undermining their role as a parent. The custodial parent really colors the way that child perceives events. Obviously, you trust and love your parent, um, and you want to believe that what they're telling you is correct. That child is then expressing and parroting back what they're hearing. How many of you um, have had it happen to you, just by a show of hands. That's about, I'd say about 40%. I ask this of every class that I teach. It's heartbreaking to me to see how many of you are dealing with this. I was trying to estimate the scope of the problem. 
and we conducted a poll in order to do that. 13% of these adults reported feeling alienated from one or more of their children. And what that comes out to is over 22 million American adults are feeling like they are being alienated from their children. If there's 22 million adults dealing with this, that's over 22 million children. And the mental health consequences on that child are severe and long-lasting. It, it was almost like this enmeshed situation through the divorce where it was like team mom or team family in Virginia. My family started asking me about the divorce and my choice. I felt like my support system was right there in front of me, so it was a pretty simple answer at the time. You can always look back at a situation and say, oh, I probably could have done this and you know, been a little nicer about it or, or welcomed her more, or had better conversations. But uh, no, I think she disappeared on her own. This is a transcript of when I went to pick my kids up. I rolled down the window, asked Rick if the kids are gonna get in the car. And he said, that is up to the kids. They can decide what to do. No, and they right? do not have to come to the door. They don't, they're, yeah, I think they do. They are old enough that they can express their wishes to me directly and I can express them to you. I'm not the one who's telling you you can't see him, hon. It's not me. It's okay. never been me. It's them. Really? Okay. You ready to go? Sure. Okay. Here we go. I was calling the police. I called the courts. I called whoever I could think of to help me. And they were like, well, no, sorry, there's nothing I can, we can help you with. Unless they do something physically harming the children, we can't, we can't intervene with this. went through all these emails and this is all the stuff I had to provide to the court so I was angry more angry with the courts than I was with what was happening because they wouldn't it was like it's almost like the thought that there's no gray area it's all black and white it was almost like they were looking to assign blame to somebody rather than figure out a way to make it work for everybody all I wanted was to have a relationship and be able to see my children. And I felt that there had to be a better way to do this. And what I was experiencing was not it. I think it was about eight. There was a custody battle that happened. When the, the divorce was final, I saw my dad every other weekend. It was supposed to be 5149, my dad to my mom. Eventually went to I was only living at my mom's. My mom hired the most expensive lawyer to make sure that she got sole custody. The family court system is mandated to work in the best interest of the children. But what actually goes on behind the closed doors of family court? If you watch any of the law shows, you come in today and you're in court tomorrow, that's not how it works. You're talking usually six, eight, 12 months down the road. And during that period of time, it's very traumatic for children. Too many cases, not enough judges. I was responsible for over a thousand cases. Some days I would have 15, 20 hearings. That you were in fear of imminent serious bodily harm. Isn't that true? Family court really sets the stage for conflict because that is the nature of the legal process. It's adversarial. In criminal court, the state has to pass certain tests to file charges, but not so in family court. One parent can bring the other parent back to court for something as serious as domestic violence or as petty as not liking the food they feed their child. Family court doesn't have to find a parent guilty of a crime, only that the other parent is the better parent. So evidence standards are much looser in family court than in criminal court. They are not looking for clear evidence to support or refute either parent's claims, and that's very problematic. 
While the courts are mandated to work in the best interest of the child, nowhere in the civil code is this term defined. So judges, custody evaluators, and psychologists can make findings based on opinions that they don't have to justify or show scientific evidence to validate. Approximately 28 billion has been an estimate of how much this costs a year for family court involvement. It's to psychologists who have to get assigned or appointed by the court to make an evaluation. They get paid thousands of dollars. Expert witnesses that parents have to call. It's an industry because all of these pieces play a role. I've had at least four or five counselors and doctors, three or four lawyers. It's cost close to a million dollars. Because it is civil court, you have no right to an attorney. This presents a barrier to families who can't afford to pay for one. The attorney I had didn't want to do his job because I did, wasn't able to pay him in full. He could have talked about the parental alienation and said something referring to that, and he didn't say a word because I couldn't pay him. How is destroying a parent financially and emotionally in the child's best interest? I found out that Brian was adopted by Karen, I believe, through an email. Ooh, OK. <laughs> I was angry and heartbroken. This is that when, uh, when you adopt somebody, everything about the person disappears, and it all starts over? I think she was like, much more like making a bigger deal than I was. She was really excited and felt like she was like a pretty nervous or maybe a little nervous to ask me. So on it, it says certificate of birth. Like I gave birth to you on this day. That's how this is written. Like it wipes everything else out before that. And now this is your legal document. So if anybody searched your birth, this is what they would see. They would see that I am now on your birth certificate as if I gave birth to you. To me, Karen was mom, and it was important to her. It's like that never happened, and this did. Yeah, it's an interesting way to, to make things happen, it. yeah. Right? Yeah. I really didn't even think about Caroline at the time. Like, I would just say it's just easier to not talk to her, and it was just such an easy decision. And in reality, there's no way that a decision like that could have been easy. So in turn, that's how I, I started building my walls. They're like, like, screw you walls, like, no one's getting in here. As a kid, we just don't want the stress of having to figure all this out. I think the parents a lot of times aren't even conscious of the conflict they're creating for the child or the way they're manipulating them. One of the concerns when you interview a child is they come into a stranger's office in an uncomfortable setting. They've been brought here by one or the other parent. The other one's sitting out there. They feel incredibly conflicted. And so I don't know that we get accurate information from children when they come in. Sophie, do you want to go see your daddy? Can you tell me why? Because I don't. <laughs> My parents fought about everything from who pays for the sport. They are the kind of people to fight over money a lot. My dad wasn't helping out whatsoever. And my mom was like, no, you know, you have four kids. Decided to, you know, file child support. And that takes, you know, most of his money out of his check because he's working at a grocery store. So what is that, you know, nothing. The child support system can lead to parents being erased. Child support creates a financial incentive for parents to fight for more parenting time. In many jurisdictions, more custody time means more child support, 
with even one extra night making a huge difference. States also earn more federal dollars to enforce child support. And if shared parenting means no child support, then there is a disincentive to grant joint custody or to make it the default option. A parent can lose their driver's license, passport, and even be incarcerated for not paying child support. But because it's civil court, you have no right to a public defender. And the worst part? In many cases, the support doesn't go to the kids. The state keeps flat fees, percentages, interest payments, and will hold on to all of it if the custodial parent receives welfare. The billions of dollars spent on child support enforcement could be spent on programs that help families, like mediation, mental health services, and enforcing custody orders. No one comes out saying, I want to be a bad parent. I want to be a bad dad. Life circumstances, as well as things that happen to them, do that. And, and most of that is, is about economics. You know, we have to change our perception and our vision of fathers. The idea of the deadbeat, especially the deadbeat dad, is an outdated and incorrect idea. Anybody in here want to share a situation where they're paying child support, but they're not able to see their children as much as they would like to? All in all, for all my kids, I pay $1,175 a month in child support. And I have seen my twins two times in nine months. I wasn't able to really put up much of a fight in court because I was making 30 bucks every two weeks. These fathers are not dead beat, they're dead broke. When I speak to some men who vent their frustrations about the child support system and why they're angry, I explain to them that child support is a business. If you don't pay your child support, you're gonna to go to jail. We heard from dozens of parents who said the state's child support system is broken and failing families. Turner paid a total of $1,935 in child support. The News 5 investigates learned his ex only received $1,386. And while the Department of Human Services would not tell us specifically where it was deposited, they did tell us they kept it. The officer told him he's a deadbeat dad, he's under arrest. The system of child support and how we put that into place are barriers to successfully having fathers involved with their children's lives. That's not the intent, but that's certainly the result. They don't want your passport if you don't have your child support. They take your driver's license. And, 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 and CDL too, right? CDL. 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 Yeah. CDL. And they take your driver's license. How are you going to do registration that? registration on your car? Yeah. Cause of child, because you're back because in the child, child support. support. Yeah. I'm a parent, married, two children. And my responsibility as a parent never goes away whether or not I'm working or not. You can't have a child and not take care of your responsibility. When it came to Walter, my brother's situation, my mother them had rescued him several times. From? Take him, take him to, to take, picking up his rear okay. and child support. Okay. They paid it up, caught it up, mm -hmm. and he would always get back, back behind because again. He, and, and even when he was continually paying. Walter may have been behind in his child support payments, but he was involved and active in his children's lives. His children were staying and visiting him the weekend that he was actually murdered. The other big story we're covering tonight, the police shooting death of an apparently unarmed man. Today in North Charleston, the anger boiled over. We just want this thing to change where no other family would have to suffer the way my family is suffering right now. The deadly encounter between Walter Scott and police officer Michael Slager began with a traffic stop for a broken taillight. It was a fateful decision. The moment Walter Scott decided to bolt from his car. There's no justification for what I see on that video. I don't know why Walter ran. He took that to the grave with him. But... I think that's where the child support may have played a part. 
It wasn't like he was trying to hurt his children. He was caught up in the system. A warrant had been issued for Scott's arrest. Court documents show he owed more than $18,000 in child support payments. Can you get a court-appointed attorney to no, represent no, you in no, a child support no, case? No, no, no. Only in a criminal case. It's about access. Access of money. But does the judge give the father information about what his rights are as no. a father? No. Like no. 40 people in there, he moving cases in and out. He ain't got time to get you. And you have no idea that you could get joint custody, shared custody. Not that you know. That's not their job. The ultimate goal in family court should be what? The child's best interest. To preserve the family. Yes. But if the dad is not in the, the child's family. life, how is that preserving the family? Well, because yes. I don't think the current system is created to preserve family. No, it's not. I think it's the not. current system is, is created to make it more punitive to parents. Once he got out, the child support was still being due, but he was not able to pay because he lost his job for being arrested. How does the system expect you to catch up when you're locked up? He'd already been arrested twice prior to him getting murdered. I believe Walter was not a deadbeat dad. After paying thousands of dollars back, then still being behind, there was no catching up. So what do you do? I don't think a man should have to die or feel so upset about the child support system that you don't care and you're gonna run for your life. I didn't have the father figure in my life. I didn't know like how to be a man. If he was really present in my life, I would probably, you know, not be chasing boys. As far as relationships go, I have a lot of trust issues now. I don't see the point in allowing someone to like get close to you if at the end of the day, they're just going to hurt you. I cause a lot of depression, anger. I just can't call him dad right now because he was never there. How would the lives of these children have been different if the courts assumed that both parents should be equally involved? A new bill making its way through Lansing would make default custody 50-50 for both the mother and the father following a divorce. Public support for it is huge. The legislators told me that they had more calls to support the shared parenting bill than they did the football stadium. This bill sets the stage so a child, which is in their best interest, whose responsibility is the best for the child. Is, it presumes both parents are fit. We need more clarity in law to support what is best for children, shared parenting, and this helps move in that direction. In any family, whether it's a man and man, women and women, it doesn't matter. There's a yin and a yang, and that's what makes a family work. Um, put in there your a default shared parenting plan would be when two people are separating, it would be presumed that both parents will have an equal role in terms of decision making and custody with their children. If there is abuse or some other problem, then you would have a custody evaluation happen. We now have abundant research that shows that children do much better if they have shared parenting. It's even more important for children who are going through divorce to have a healthy relationship with both parents because it buffers them from the conflict. We just assume that children who move 50 times a year would be more stressed than those who live only with one parent. The packing did suck, but I got to see them every other week, and now looking back, I appreciate it a lot more. I am convinced that the Swedish system where you don't have any money to gain from a divorce is 
beneficial for children. We have a system where very few separating couples go to court. Most people just solve this between themselves. We have this form. It's an agreement that we share the custody of our son. You just print it out, sign it, and send it. We don't have to go to court or hire a lawyer or anything to do this. If the marriage itself was more conflictual, but you learn to get along better afterwards, kids do much better. If default shared parenting became the norm, the legal system could be more focused on things that really are significant, documented child abuse cases. It would be wonderful if people thought, this is sort of where we're starting, and only if we prove that we cannot do it, that's when we have to move to this adversarial process. It would really change the face of how people manage divorces. There's a lot of incentives to keep things the way they are, particularly by the American Bar Association and other folks. There's a lot of money in divorce, and with shared parenting, there's less conflict, less conflict, fewer billable hours. Pay up, and you're on your way to getting rid of that vermin you call a spouse. very real potential for this state to lose federal funding, and I'm talking millions, possibly hundreds of millions of dollars. This issue has not been addressed by those in favor of this law. What's in the best interest of the kid is not to worry about how much federal dollars we're going to get for food stamps in this country. It's ridiculous. I represent the Family Law Foundation. The foundation is respectfully against the bill. In Florida, when the bill advanced through the Senate and the House and was on its way to the governor, the Bar Association spent $110,000 to hire emergency lobbyists to defeat the bill. In North Dakota, they've been sued and lost because they misused $70,000 to run an advertising campaign against a shared parenting ballot initiative. What if getting help to reunite with your erased child didn't depend on you going back to family court, hiring a lawyer, or navigating a complex legal process on your own? What if all the resources spent on child support enforcement and adversarial court trials were spent on promoting shared parenting, affordable mediation, and access to mental health services that even if a parent is imperfect, and none are, erasing a parent does lasting harm. We need to stop assigning blame and start helping parents to be in their kids' lives. It has been eight months since I've seen my children. It's been over four years since I've been able to hug them, hold their hand, or take their picture. I haven't seen my sisters for four and a half years. I haven't seen my daughters for more than five years. Uh, I haven't seen you in almost two years. My son here, who's three years old, has not been able to meet is two other siblings, so... They liked me when I was a baby. We wanted to tell you how much we miss you. We want to let you know how much his dad loves him. But I just wanted to share some of the pain that I felt. Te extraño mucho. I love them, and I'm here for them. We were best friends. Je t'aime beaucoup. I want you to come home. And I want to just see your smile again. And I'm sad to say I'm an erased mommy. I'm an erased dad. I'm an erased sister. And I do believe that one day we will reunite. Thought to myself, it's
Is this a good idea or just insane? All this way for a man I've never met His name ain't even on my birth certificate He's nervous to a bed So much inside me I would like to say but I'll just say hey. Standing in this baggage zone I couldn't feel any more alone Is this the way she felt The last 18 years Thinking I chose not to be around I had no idea until she found me And now she's standing here I didn't want to let the words get in the way So I just said, hey Show. Sure.